Troy, how you doing, man? Thanks for stopping in, man. I see you look pretty good in that new fit, Kingdom Living. Hey, tell me about uh, tell me about the, your your experience with the Vision of the Cross. You know, I came first time I found God was about 13 years ago. Visions of the Cross had a one little house. Now it's a huge men's program, saving a bunch of people. And I was just talking to God by myself for the first time in my life, and uh, I actually got the feel what people say when he uh, he gives you a, like a little broken feeling. You broke down in tears, and he showed me what, what he was all about. And uh, that's Kingdom Living. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about when he showed. What did he show you? He, he showed me. Show me love. Show me love. Show me love. Show me grace. Grace. And uh, show me that I, I do have a father. You Damn. know. That's all we need, bro. It is. Thanks for stopping in, Troy. Appreciate you, man. You look good. Look good. Thank feel you, good. Feel good. Ask These God. are the fits, man. Come get you some. All right. Have a good one, bros. Eric, brother, thank you for stopping in, man. Such a great conversation, man. And uh, you was just about to tell me something. Yeah, I have a Tesla. I tried to leave this Reading area twice, and God rerouted me. Come on. Uh, the first time, we packed up, and then we were gone. My wife was all packed, ready to go. And then... A customer of mine said, you want to, want to buy this house for me? I'm like, I can't buy the house. I just lost everything. This was the time the economy collapsed. And they said, here's the keys. We're the bank. What? So two years ago, year and a half ago, I sold my house here, packed up, bought property in Kentucky. And on the way to Kentucky, everything fell apart. Come on, man. But my house here was sold. But the weirdest thing about it is, not weird, the, I did for sale by owner. Okay. The guy who purchased my house called me before I got that phone call from my lender because everything had closed two days prior and said, a door is going to close, something bigger is going to happen. What? And so we continued on and now we're back in the house that I sold. You got to be kidding me. And the guy that bought the house, we've been, we're like brothers. Man. So God so, wants me to stay here for a reason. For a reason. For a reason. What, well, um, why do you think that that reason is? Because Reading, something big from the kingdom is going to happen here in Reading. And God needs all his foot soldiers out. And I believe me and my wife and my family are, are part of that. Man. And you, you're you bringing in some uh, major hitters coming into town yeah. soon, right? Miles in January? Manic, in January 27th. Okay. Uh, Hip-hop, uh, R&B, uh, just the full-flown festival is called Forgiven Fest 2. Forgiven Fest 2. Um, it's my second one. I did one this past January, and then we're doing it again in January again. Almost a year to the date. I did it January 28th of this year, January 27th of next year. Absolutely, brother. Thank you for stopping in. And, and I want to thank God for bringing me this way to stop by and see this brother here because I wasn't even intended on coming this way. Amen. Amen. Nice to meet you, big dog. Yeah. Appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate you too. And who do I have here? My name is Sarah. Sarah, nice to yeah, meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for stopping in. Yeah. You were just getting ready to say something, and I stopped you because I felt like I was supposed to capture it on camera. Yeah. What were you saying? Um, I was saying I'd always heard that God never leaves you or forsakes you, but it's one thing to hear it; it's another thing when you get to experience it. Wow. Yeah. So good. So, give me an example of how you experienced it. How? What did? It, what was He faithful to you about? Um, I went through domestic violence and I ended up homeless okay. uh, because of it. Absolutely. And so, you know, for a long time I always believed in Jesus, but I hadn't experienced His grace or His mercy or love oh my until gosh. I went through this experience with my ex. Um, I just got to a very low point and I just started thinking there's no way after everything that I went through that God could still love me. Wow. But. My ex tried to kill me. He oh. took me out to the middle of nowhere. I'd spent some money. I couldn't remember what I had done with it. Um, ironically, I gave it to a church. I remember now, but back then, like it was not coming to me. And so I was telling him, oh, look, I gave it to your buddy for the tattoo he gave you in the hotel room. Yeah. I was just saying all kinds of things just so that he wouldn't touch me. And um, I tried everything. He took my phone from me. He destroyed my car. Wow. And um, I was on my knees begging him for mercy. And that was the first time I realized that he enjoyed what he was doing. Um, this just evil smile came across his face. And I was like, he's really going to kill me if something doesn't happen. And there wasn't anybody around. No wow. phone. I was in the middle of nowhere. And that was the first time where I was like, Jesus, just please save me. 
And as soon as I surrendered it to God, he took his hands up and he just said, just get out of here. What? Just go, just leave. Oh my gosh. And uh, that was the first time where I was like, God was just waiting for me to let him have this situation. He was just waiting for me to surrender it. And that's when I experienced like, he does still love me. He is still with me. He does still care. He just wanted me to let this go. And when I did, he came through and I ended up in Teen Challenge that week. What? And um, <laughs> I've just been experiencing his, his grace more and more. And it's really not about what I did. It was just when I was willing to surrender, he was there. Wow, that is such a good story. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with me in yeah, the audience.